Now let us understand what radius of curvature is first okay. Next what we are trying to do is we are trying to understand what is the meaning of radius of curvature. curvature r okay. Now say I have a curve like this okay. Now what we are interested is we are interested in finding at a given point what is the circle, what is the radius of the circle r such that locally it will coincide with the curve at that point okay radius of circle whose curvature whose curvature would be same as the curvature of the curve at that point locally okay. So, r from analytical geometry is given by 1 plus d delta y by dx whole square whole power 3 by 2 divided by d square delta by dx square okay, where delta y is the curve, the equation of the curve as a function of x, this x which deformed into like that delta y is the equation of the curve okay. So, now what happens? We approximated theta tan theta which was d delta y by dx as being approximately equal to theta because we assumed d delta y by dx to be small or of order 10 power minus 3 or lesser okay. Hence what we can do is compared to 1 year this d delta y by dx whole square will be small. So, I can approximate this as 1 by d square delta y by dx square okay. Now rewriting this then this equation becomes E by r okay that is the bending equation. So, if I take a uh, wire and wound it all around this pen the radius of curvature of that wire would be the radius of the spin at that actual location okay. The radius of curvature of the pen, uh, the radius of curvature of the wound wire which is bent around the spin would be the radius of the spin locally okay. So, I will use that radius of curvature here to estimate what my bending stresses are directly in that case okay. So, basically this is C by R. Now there is one more quantity called as curvature which is denoted by phi which is nothing but 1 by r okay which is m by e i z z which is nothing but epsilon x6 by y minus y0. That is if you measure the strain at a particular location, the actual strain at a particular location and divide it by the distance from the neutral axis that will give you a measure of curvature okay. That is if I have a cross section like this of a beam and I am measuring the strain the actual strain at this location I am measuring epsilon xx at this location and if this location from the neutral axis is at a distance h by 2 then curvature is given by the strain at h by 2 divided by h by 2 okay. So, that is a measure of curvature of the beam okay. In other words that will be nothing but the moment bending moment divided by e times i z z okay. So, to summarize what I have seen in today's lecture is two things we have found the bending equation for the stresses 
the bending equation is given by minus sigma y minus y naught equal to m z by i z z equal to e by r equal to e phi equal to e d square delta by d x square delta y. Okay. So, and then we have two more governing equations d m z by d x plus v y equal to 0 and d v y by d x plus q y equal to 0. Okay. So, now these equations govern the stress displacement bending moment and shear force developed left in a beam okay now how do you apply this for a given loading q of y for a given loading q of y the input known quantity is q of y as a function of x is a known quantity okay now you take this and then you substitute you will get by substituting for v y in here you get d square m z by d x square plus is equal to q y okay you integrate this integrate to get m of x m z of x along with boundary conditions okay once you get m z of x you go to the first equation you go to this equation and what you do is you get the stress as m z of x divided by i z z into y minus y naught with a negative sign that gives you sigma x x stress that gives you sigma x x stress okay then you use the final equation to get d square delta y by d x square to be given by m z divided by e times i z z of x okay now you integrate this integrate to get delta y along with the boundary conditions okay now combining these two combining these two equations what i get is i get d square by d x square to e times i z z d square delta y by d x square equal to q y okay so this is the governing equation for displacement of a beam okay so that is the governing equation for the displacement of the beam your final element codes like sap e taps abacus ansys all these solve this equation to get the response of a beam okay 
So, in the next class what we will do is we will take up specific examples and work out the details on how to solve this problem and how to get the stress, strain, your displacement, your shear force and all the response quantities for a beam. Okay. Thank you.